Okay, so in this video we're going to build the V-slot NEMA 23 lead screw driven actuator. It's a simple build and by the end of the build we'll go ahead and join two of these together and make an XY table system out of it. Should be fun, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first we need to do a little bit of a prep work on the lead screw itself. We need to make sure that the bearings can slide in on each end. So go ahead and locate the bearings and just grab one of them and just make sure that it can slide on. And you can see that it, it can slide a little bit, but it really needs to go on smooth at about two inches in. So I take some fine grit sandpaper and just knock the end down a little bit like this. you can see how now it can slide down to here it just smooths it out a little bit enough to make this slide on this won't affect your gantry move because the lead nut never reaches that even close to that far to the end so let's go ahead and do that on both ends and just make sure that they fit i'm kind of just spinning this with my hands and just knocking it down a little bit if there's any burrs or anything on there There you go, that one slides on pretty easy. That one slides on pretty easy. That's perfect, that's what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so for this step, we're going to tap the ends of the 20 by 80 V-slot, and you should have some uh, self-tapping screws in there. This is just a simple way to do it. Um, you could actually take a tap and tap these out. We're just gonna do these holes on the ends here, outside edge. But I like to use these screws, it's really easy to do. I just screw them in there with the drill on low. Back them out and So you're gonna do these two ends and then you'll do these two ends. And you can see here the thread marks in there, they're tapped. And that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so for this next step, we're gonna go ahead and locate our four wheels. We should have four of the solid V wheels. And it comes with a wheel shell, two bearings, two shims, and an M5 nut. And the way they are built is you simply insert the bearing, and then you take one of the shims, insert the next bearing on top of that. The shim is in there. Squeeze it together, and that's it. So we'll go ahead and just keep these parts with it because eventually we'll come back to use those. Let's go ahead and build the rest of these three. And you can see that the uh, shim in there is kind of loose, but that's all right. When we put the screw in there, it'll, it'll align itself and everything will work out. We just have to make sure that that shim is in there or they won't work properly. So this is what you have left. We'll just move that to the side and we'll move on to the next step. We're going to go ahead and mount our motor mount plate on top of the V-slot. Now, you want to take a look at the motor mount plate here and you'll notice there's a recess for the bearing. You want to face that in like, I sh like I'm showing you here, in towards the V-slot so that the bearing will be on the inside here. So we're gonna take two of our self-tappers. We've already pre-tapped these holes. I'm just gonna get it started here. And I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and tighten these down a little bit, but not all the way yet. Let's get them close. Okay, so these are, these are uh, in most of the way, but not all the way. I'm just going to lay this on the table, and you can see that when you do that, it just makes it kind of flush with the bottom, and then we'll tighten it in the rest of the way. You may even hold it over the edge of the table and get a better bite on it. All right. That looks really good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so let's get started. We're going to be, all right, so let's get started. We're gonna be assembling the NEMA 23 stepper motor to the mounting plate, motor mounting plate. So you'll need uh, some M5 screws, the three 40 millimeter spacers, 
three of your 55 millimeter screws and a flex coupling that's quarter inch to eight millimeter. And we're gonna go ahead and start and just loosely put the quarter inch side of the flex coupling onto the stepper motor, as you can see here. If you have to, just loosen the set screw a little bit, but that should be fine. And just keep in mind the orientation of the wires. Ours uh, are gonna be facing kind of at this bottom left here. Um, it mounts at a 45 degree angle, like you see there. So let's go ahead and get the 55 millimeter screws and we'll push them through the holes here. Get an idea of what they look like. And we'll go ahead and get the 40 millimeter spacers and we'll slide those over top of the screw. Like you see here, we'll take three of the M5 nuts, introduce the stepper motor. Again, with the wires for this particular one are gonna be facing down and just slide them into the, slide the screws into the uh, stepper motor hole. So like that, and we'll go ahead and put the nuts on here. So something like that, they're loose right now. So I'll take my wrench, my eight millimeter wrench, and I'm just gonna hold it on here like so, and then I'll tighten these down. It kind of locks the nut in place while you're trying to tighten it down. All right, so that looks really good. You can see we still have this loose, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So in this step, we're gonna go ahead and install the nut block onto the V-slot gantry plate. And you just wanna make sure before you get started that the lead screw is gonna fit on, into the nut block nice and smoothly, and it does. Um, if, it's, if it's tough to get on there, just you may have to file one of the ends a little bit to kind of open up the threads there but it should be okay. You should be able to just turn it right in there as long as it's lined up properly. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is locate two of the M5 nuts. And if you notice on the back of the nut block, you have a spot for them. And I face the nut just like you see here with the side, with the raised side with the nylon facing up. And it just pops into place there. You also want to locate your 15 millimeter screws, low profile screws, and you're going to need two of those. And we're just going to slide these through these two holes here, put my fingers on here and line that up and we'll go ahead and tighten that in place. Now I like to tighten it up so that the screw goes into the nylon and then back it off a little bit just to make sure lined up in the hole here I press down a little bit and then reseat these and you don't want to over tighten this obviously it's Delrin and uh, you don't want to deform it so that looks good it's all nice and tight it's not going anywhere looks great let's move on to the next step on this step you want to locate the two spacer blocks that you have you'll notice that these two holes are tapped and they're going to sit on here just like you see here. So using 15 millimeter screws, we're gonna go ahead and attach these on the same side as the nut block. So just kind of line up the holes, and get them started by hand maybe. Should look something like that. And we'll do the other one on the opposite side on the farthest set of holes away from the center. Same, same as the last. So this is what you're after up to this point. It looks really good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and put our wheels on. And if you take notice, you'll see that on one side of the plate, you have the larger holes. These are gonna be for the eccentrics that'll mount to this side. And on this side of the plate, we have the standard M5 holes. So. We'll do the standard ones first, just to get started here. So you're gonna need two of your 40 millimeter screws, as well as two of the six millimeter aluminum spacers. You're gonna need two of the three millimeter aluminum spacers, two of your wheels, two of the shims, and two of the M5 nuts. We're basically going to, again, on the standard side, we're gonna just push these through 
and that's what they should look like. Just gonna tilt that on its side for right now. Need our two aluminum spacers. Put those on. Those are six millimeters. And then we're gonna need two of our three millimeters. Now we'll take our shims and we'll just slide those on. And this is uh, what you should have here. You got your six millimeter spacer, your three millimeter spacer, and then your shim. All right, we're gonna take our wheel, slide that on, and then hand tighten an M5 nut, just like that. Same thing on this side. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and bring in the uh, tools and we'll tighten that down. We need an eight millimeter wrench for the nut. That should roll really smooth and be on there nice and tight. That looks great. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, for this step, everything is going to be the same, same, the, the remaining two wheel sets that you have. The only difference is this side is going to get the eccentric. So you wanna bring in two of your six millimeter eccentrics and they have a cam on them uh, that once they're in the hole, it can actually move the wheel back and forth as you adjust the cam. So that's the only difference between this setup. So we'll go ahead and build that. Start with our two 40 millimeter screws. Even though the hole is big, when we put the eccentric on there, as you can see, it has this lip. Once it goes into the hole here, it tightens everything up. Let's go ahead and put those on. I'm just holding it back here with my fingers while I'm doing this. And then we'll need our three millimeter spacers. And then again, our shims. So we have our eccentric, a three millimeter spacer, and then the one millimeter shim, and then the wheel, and then the M5 nut. And we'll go ahead and tighten this down. Now these, we don't want to tighten all the way down because we still want to be able to adjust them. So we're just going to snug them so they don't wiggle around. Okay, so that looks good. That's our spacing. Everything looks great there. Don't worry about where the cam position is as far as the divot goes. Um, we could actually adjust that right now if we want. Go ahead and do that right now. We'll turn these divots, if you see them here on the side here, we want to face them out away from the center of the plate. See here and here, they're facing out. And this will give us the widest span of adjustment. So that'll be as open as it can be. All right, that looks awesome. Let's move on to the next step. On this step, we're going to adjust the cams or the eccentrics on the wheels to get them to lock onto the rail. And all I'm gonna do is just line this up with the V here, slide it on, and you can see it's loose, has play in there. I'll go ahead, let me see if I can turn this around. I have the eccentrics on this side here. I'm just gonna take my wrench and I'm gonna slowly turn these until, I mean, right now the wheel is loose, until that wheel engages with the track there. Feel a little bit of friction there, so we'll start on this one. Go back and forth and try to get an even amount of friction on both of them. Once there's friction on them, they are locked into the V. You don't want to overdo this. And just keep adjusting them until they lock in there. And I'm turning it about a sixteenth at a time and alternating them so that one doesn't end up tighter than another. Nice and tight, but yet nice smooth movement. That's what you're after, but no wiggle room this way. Okay, that's great. Now remember that we did not uh, snug these. We didn't tighten these up on the eccentric side. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that process now. There you go, just one more turn. That should do it. Still no movement. Nice. That's great. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so for this step, we are going to install the lead screw and we're just gonna go ahead and start turning the lead screw through the nut block here. Get it to poke out here a little bit. And you're going to need your eight millimeter bearing that you see here, as well as the eight millimeter shim as well as the eight millimeter lock collar. And it, it comes with a set screw that you wanna just get started there. So let's go ahead and put the lock collar on first. 
and make sure your set screw is not sticking through so, so it can go all the way in there. We'll take our eight millimeter shim and just, the shim has a flat side as you can see here and it also has a rounded side. And I like to face the rounded side towards what will be our bearing. So the rounded side is facing that way. And then our bearing is next. Slide that on. That looks good. Now this plate may not line up. This is not the permanent location of that plate. Also make sure that you're loose here. But what we're gonna do is slide this into the flexible coupling here. Go ahead and do that now. And then you can tighten that down. So that's held in place. We'll slide all these over. Now, as you can see, the bearing doesn't want to line up at this point, but that's all right. We have adjustments here. So we're going we're gonna to crack these two screws loose. And we're just going to leave those loose for now. We're going to line up our bearing and make sure that it goes down into the hole, into the recess there. You can see that it's in the recess. It just set in there. That looks good. We'll go ahead and tighten down the lock collar. And I'm pressing down on the lock collar while I tighten that down. Okay, that looks good. And like I said, we'll just leave that loose for now. Um, we don't have to tighten that up. You can turn this assembly with your thumb here just to move it back a little bit. But that looks good for this step. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. For this step, we're gonna go ahead and just reverse that operation. We're gonna go ahead and once again, I have my eight millimeter lock collar with a set screw. Let's slide that on. We'll get our eight millimeter shim. And again, with the rounded side facing out toward the, where the bearing will sit and the bearing. Looks good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, on this step, we're going to be mounting the, the uh, end plate here onto this end. And of course, we'll need our end plate and two, the two remaining self-tapping screws. So let's go ahead. I'll stand this up. Again, making sure that the recess side faces in towards the bearing. Go ahead and put our screws in here. Just going to get them close to tightened up, but not actually tightened yet. So I can still move this around, which is exactly what we want. At this point, I am going to tighten this down just a hair, actually, because we need to seat these. Um, so I'm just going to I'm put my bearing in there first and then bringing the lock collar in. And I'm just going to push in that lock collar against there. Just going to tighten that down a little bit. Make sure there's no play there. And now I'm going to loosen these back up. So I'm just cracking these a little bit. These two screws here. And then that gives enough play that we can find where this needs to be adjustment wise. Let's start with this one. Bringing the nut block as close as we can to this end. Flip the system over. Making sure you try to stay straight across here. Let's go ahead and tighten this up. Just look at your lip here, make sure you're even across there. And then we'll move this plate down to the opposite end, the gantry. And because these two screws are loose, it will find where it needs to be. Okay, so we're all the way to the end here. We're hitting on the lock collar. Spin that around. And we'll go ahead and tighten this up. All right, that looks good. Bring it back. And that is how you assemble the NEMA 23 lead screw driven actuator. That looks great. We can add knobs on the end here, crank knobs if we'd like, so we can uh, manually position it where we, where we want. So that looks awesome. Congratulations on building your NEMA 23 lead screw driven actuator. Okay, so we want to take our NEMA 23 lead screw driven actuator and we want to build an XY table system out of it. So we've gone through, we've built a, a single lead screw driven actuator. Now we need to go ahead and build two of them identical. So this is what they would look like. What we're going to end up doing is just mounting the one on top of the other. And this will give us an XY table system. So 
the first thing that we want to do is we need to get the gantry plates off so that we can go ahead and bolt them together. It's important that you build them individually first, make sure everything works, and then we take the back plates off. And then at that point, we can do what we're doing now, which is to take the back plates off and bolting the gantry plates together. So let's get started. We're gonna start by removing the, the end plates here. All right, so we have the end plates removed. It's really simple. We're gonna go ahead and unscrew the gantry plates here. Let's get these off of the lead screws. All right, so that looks great. We're, we're about ready to bolt these together. So let's move everything else out of the way and then we'll go ahead and build the XY system. Okay, at this point we are going to use our XY mounting hardware, which consists of four M5 15 millimeter screws, four of the slot washers, and four of the M5 nuts. And what we're gonna do is take, take our plates, as you can see here, our gantry plates, and we're gonna fi affix them like this in an XY configuration. In order to do that, we have to space them off a little bit. So we're gonna use our spacers, and you can see, if you just mimic where I'm putting these over these holes, these four holes, it's the third row in from the outside. And basically just like this, is how you want to set that up. I'm going to take this plate and aligning it the best that we can, set it right on top, take our screws, work them in there. And there's room to wiggle around, that's fine. Stand this on end carefully with my finger on the back two screws here. I'm just going to go go ahead and put the nuts on the back here All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just tighten up one of these on one side here not overly tightening it, but I want to be able to position this so I can square everything up. And you can kind of look down it and get an idea of where it's square, if it's not or if it is. Kind of adjust that where you want it. Then I'll do the one the opposite corner. Again, don't over tighten it because you still want to be able to adjust it. So it's still a little loose. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these, uh, not tightened down, but just snug them. Do something like that. Then you go through and kind of move this around and get it to where you know that it's straight. You can measure off of each end if you need to. Um, once you have that, you can go ahead and finish tightening them in position. All right, so once you have all four of the mounting hardware bolted in, this is what it should look like. And if you look between there, you'll see that the plates are actually stood off on these two millimeter slot washers. And that's really good. It keeps everything stable. And so that takes care of the XY gantries. Let's go ahead and reintroduce our V slot and we'll build the system back up and put the end plates on. Okay, so we brought in our V slot assemblies here. We're just gonna go ahead and slide these back on. At the same time, try to line up the lead screw. Maybe, maybe easier like this. There we go. Just get it started like you see here and then we can turn our lead screw and get it to go the rest of the way. And we'll get this about halfway. All right, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and bring in our end plate assembly, our eight millimeter lock collar, our bearing, and our eight millimeter shim. So we'll put the lock collar on first. The shim, again, with the rounded part facing toward the bearing then the bearing itself and go ahead and stand this up again with the recess facing in toward the bearing we're going to put the plate on thread start it there a little bit and we'll screw this down flush but we won't over tighten it Let's get it started and i'll probably hang it off the end of the table here it'll be easier okay so that looks good now I'm just going to crack this loose just a little bit and the idea is that we want this to be able to move up and down 
like you see here, but not be loose, just so we can adjust it. All right, line up our bearing, put it in the slot there, bring our lock collar back. You don't want the plate to be tilted, so you can see that the plate is loose. And that's good. Now we'll bring it all the way to this end, as far as we can get it. And this will bring the nut block as close as we can to this end here. Now make sure you leave a little bit of a gap there because we have to tighten this plate up. But in doing that, that allows us to get the best alignment that we possibly can. We'll spin this over and then tighten the plate down. That looks great. It's moving nice. Bring us back out to the middle a little bit. And then we'll introduce this next section here. Let's turn it this way. This one we can kind of see where the lead screw is. Hold this end up a little bit. You can see it working its way through there. Now we're on there. And now we're going to go through and install the plate on the end the same way we did on the other one. So we'll bring in the plate. We got our bearing, eight millimeter bearing, eight millimeter shim, eight millimeter lock collar, and our two self-tapping screws. So first we'll put our lock collar on, eight millimeter shim with the, with the uh, rounded side of the shim facing this way towards the bearing, our bearing, and our plate with the recess facing in. Get our um, self-tapper started there. If you get these self-tappers aligned, it's so much easier if you just take a time to line them up, they go right in. So I've got this tightened down and then I'm just going to crack it back a little bit. So we have, it's tight, but we have movement. Again, we'll bring our, our bearing over and tighten up our lock collar. Now we're going to bring this whole assembly this way so we can get the best alignment possible. Remember, don't touch the plate. Just stay off the plate about a millimeter or two. You see here. I'll flip this over. Go ahead and tighten this in place. That, that is an awesome XY assembly right there. You could have a laser up here. You could have a, a router. You can bolt things onto here. One of the other things I wanted to show was on these ends, you can see that the lead screw is sticking out. You can add knobs to these ends. I've gone through and I've 3D printed a couple knobs to get to where you can actually adjust where you need to be uh, quickly. And it's nice, it's strong. It can be with a couple L brackets on the ends here. You could mount this to pretty much anything. So this is a really great XY stage system. It's very economical, heavy duty, it uses quality parts. And we really just look forward to seeing all the great creations you guys come up with with this system. Please post to openbuilds.com. Hope you'd enjoyed the build. Remember to keep it fun. Thanks for watching.